uh, of uh, the pain to the groin, examination relieved mind tenderness in the left flank. Uh, investigation confirmed the presence of renal calculi. The stone is most likely which of the following? Uh, correct answer, calcium exhalate. Uh, I think about 16, this is hereditary. Ammonium, magnesium, sturvate, this is uh, with recurrent inflammation or infection, mainly bacteria or is producer. Uric acid uh, related to the gout or other disease as leukemia or uh, destructive. Calcium phosphate, this is related with hypercalcemia or hypercalcemia. Uh, for this calcium oxalate, the most common type of kidney stones. Uh, correct answer, calcium oxalate. Thank you so much. So simply, all your renal calculi, three quarters of them are calcium oxalate stones. Okay? And half of these calcium oxalates containing phosphate in addition to oxalate, and they can visualize simply on the X-ray because I say it like in Arabic, obek abiyat, obek bb, obek abiyat can be visualized on the X-ray. And don't forget, there is a triple phosphate stone, which is called strovite stone. And the strovite is ammonium magnesium phosphate stone. And this is infection one. So because this stone is formed on a top of nidus, which is infection of urease producing organisms. So on top of this infection, there will be nidus. Nidus means a nucleus for forming concentric layers of ammonium magnesium phosphate in the form of staghorn stone. This is a struvite triple phosphate or uh, ammonium magnesium phosphate stone, which is staghorn stone, and this one is very big stone. And also don't forget the cystine stone, and this is associated with the, as you know, with the congenital conditions, and both of them are also abiyad radio opaque, okay? Talking to the, in a nutshell, about the other stones, we said that 70 to 80 are calcium, oxalate, and this will be due to hypercalcuria, due to enuresum, and hyperuricosuria, and hyperoxaluria, and also hypocitraturia. Okay, because the citrus acid function is to, the function is to make it less. But when you have hypocitraturia, you will have the uh, this chelatory uh, chelation substance less, so you have calcium oxalate more. Calcium phosphate is 20% of this type, and it is also low urine volume, the same actually, and high urine pH, alkaline uh, urine. Okay, so don't forget that you can find calcium phosphate in primary hyperthyroidism. Don't forget this word, stones, moons, so stones and moans, groans, and hyperthyroidism due to hypercalcemia, so it will be calcium phosphate. Uric acid, they are common in the acidic pH, less than 5.5, and hyperuricosuria also can attribute to uric acid. This thiene stone, and this is uh, caused by the congenital inborn error of metabolism, cystonuria, this is autosomal recessive, and also uh, don't forget also this one to five percent of the renal calcula are staghorn stone because of infection, urease producing organisms like as Proteus mirabilis, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and Eclipsiella species. Okay, and E. coli is not a urease uh, uh, producing, so just to make sure that what is common is common. Dr. Adnan, what is common is common. I can see you in the video. So <laughs> you should close the video, Mr. Adnan, or who is that? So anyone opening the video, we can we can see you. So, <laughs> so just no problem. I like to see you guys. You are my colleagues, but just to make you aware. Escherichia coli is not a producing, but when I ask you, what is the most common cause of UTI? Positive organism. 
what what is the most common organism of UTI? Do you know? Shersha coli. Excellent. E. coli. Excellent. Okay, so don't just don't make just to make sure. Okay, this is uh, noise guidelines. This is when you have acute confirmed stone, no evidence of obstruction of non malignant, non pregnant. The first line you will do the hydration, analgesia, and antiemetics. Okay, and then you if there is nitrate positive in urine or leukocytes, this means that you have UTI. So associated bacteriuria, you should start antibiotic therapy, nitroferentoin or trimethoprim, and then you will give surgical decompression according to the size. For stones of five to 10 millimeter, this is very, very small one. So you can just give what is called the medical best medical management or medical expulsive therapy, and you can add tamsulosin. Okay, but if I told you stone is very clear to say more than five to ten millimeter or failed medical therapy, you can add surgical decompression in the form of what? As well, and urotroscopy are the first line, and then if you have large one, you will do percutaneous antigrade uteroscopy with a very large stone, more than 15 millimeter stones impacted in the upper ureter or when retrograde axis is not possible. And then PCNL, this is minimally invasive. It's called percutaneous nephrolithotomy. And this is reserved for renal and the proximal ureteric stones. I mean in the lower pool of the kidney. And also for large ones, more than 20 millimeter, if they have failed therapy with as well. I will share at the end about a diagram, very nice one from our new notes about this uh, stuff. When you do use, as well, when you do PCNL, and for open surgical stone removal or laparoscopic, this is in rare cases where all these above failed, as well uteroscopy and pecnel failed, PCNL. Okay, upcoming question about this gentleman and Aki Ferdous will be answering the question. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Reda. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. A 12-year-old boy attends with a four-hour history of sudden onset of right testicular pain and nausea. The right testis is high riding and transverse. Testicular torsion is suspected. What is the most appropriate initial management? Uh, a, immediate scrotal expiration. B, observation. C, scrotal expiration that day. Uh, D, scrotal ultrasound scan. And E, two-week course of antibiotics. Uh, my answer is A, immediate scrotal expiration. What is your diagnosis, provisional diagnosis? Torsion, uh, testicular torsion. If I told you, please wait for tomorrow, ultrasound will be booked. Would you wait? No, no. The, the testis will be necrosed. Within how many hours? Six hours. Excellent. So when you have this age group, okay, with sudden onset testicular pain, and you examine the patient, and the pain is very tender, testicular, at, testicular torsion should be enlightened in your brain, and you should ask for immediate scrotal exploration. Okay, Akib, what do you do by what you are going to do after exploration? Is uh, it bilateral uh... or unilateral side or cubexy? Bilateral, bilateral orthodopsy. Excellent. So, what is the most common reason behind the this uh, testicular torsion? Uh, there is the bell clapper deformity. Excellent. Thank you so much. So, bell clapper deformity is a redundant tonica vaginalis that not fit well, fit 
well fitted inside the around the testicle so your testicle is like a bell hanging from the cover of the bell which is tonica vaginalis so at any point it can be twisted without without any minor history or history of minor trauma so immediate scrotal exploration this is typical history of torsion and bell clubber deformity should uh, be the, the highest or the commonest reason due to redundant tonic vaginalis. Immediate surgical ex exploration is safe within uh, four to six hours and no need to do ultrasound unless you have it in your hand within four to six hours. And bilateral or cubexy will be the answer. Okay, so this is a normal one, but this is the abnormal one, the bell clubber. Tonica vaginalis envelop the all epididymis, like you see here. And then this tonica vaginalis, like this is a tonica vaginalis, only part of the epididymis is covered, but here, this is tonica vaginalis. So at this neck point, the, the testis is easy to be torted. If you have a growing swelling, have you will, how you will assess? So first, you will put your hand and ask the patient to cough. If there is cough impulse, you have two, two options. If it is above and medial to the pubic tubercle, you will think about inguinal hernia, direct or indirect. If you have a groin swelling, you have direct or indirect inguinal hernia with cuff impulse. If it is above and medial, the pubic tubercle. If it is below and lateral, the pubic tubercle, please think about 40 or 30 to 40 female coming with severe pain and groin swelling. This mostly, or your top differential is strangulated femoral hernia because it is of wide neck and common to strangulate and femoral female common to strangulate. If no cuff impulse, just to check. Is it in the saphenu femoral junction place? and compressible, then think about saphenopharynx. If it is expansile, means that your fingers, two index finger are go away from each other, going away from each other. So think about femoral artery aneurysm or pseudo aneurysm, especially in two cases. IV drug user, think about pseudo femoral aneurysm or if you have what's called a recent intra-arterial axis from a femoral vessel, like for a PCI patient, okay? So think about recent axis, recent vascular axis, or IV drug abuser. So my advice to you as a UK registrar, when you have an inguinal swelling, just document that she is not recent or he is not recent IV drug user. I have seen a lot of cases. You should document or recent I, uh, IV access or arterial, recent arterial or any recent vascular access. Okay, if it is a trans illuminating and surrounding the whole testis, it is testicular hydrocele. But if it is trans illuminating and in the inguinal canal region, or inguinal scrotal swelling, think about hydrocele of the cord. If it is hard, think about lymph nodes. If it is soft, fluctuating, red hot tender, think about abscess. If it is only soft, slippery edge, think about lipoma. Okay, so this is a normal testicle. This is testicular tumor, mass, part of the testicle. Testicle can be separated. You can get above 
some people asking, what is the meaning of testicle separated and what about can get above it? So two sentences. Separated testicle can be separated. This means that this swelling is separate, like testicular tumor, like epididymal cyst. But if I told you testicle cannot be separated, this means that the whole testicle is surrounded by a swelling, like what? Like hydrocele. Okay, Rida, what about can get above it? Very nice. So if you have purely scrotal swelling, you can take it in your hand, balloot it, then this will be what? Will be you can get above it. So the whole swelling can be taken in your hands. Okay, very nice. So now you can get above it. But if you have inguinoscrotal hernia, then this swelling, you cannot get above it. Why? Because it is inguinoscrotal inside the inguinal canal. So you will not be able to get above it. Excellent. So normal testicle, testicular tumor, hard swelling can be separated from the testicle and you can get above it and hard to irregular or hard to firm. Epididymal cyst, small one, lobulated, cystic, you can get above it and it is in the upper pool of the testicle, so testicle can be separated. Varicocele, bag of worms, due to dilated tortuous bambiniform plexus of veins, and you will not be able to get above it because it, the bambiniform plexus of veins are, are inside. This is the varico seal. Okay. Inguinoscrotal hernia, cuff impulse, you cannot get above it, and but testicle cannot be separated, and it might be reducible inside the inguinal canal. Hydrocele, it is all surrounding the testicle, so it is transilluminating, and you will not be able to get above it. Epididymitis, tender in the upper pool of the testicle and not severe tenderness. It is vague tenderness, so it's not torsion. So you can think about viral or bacterial epididymo or kites, especially if you have recently mumps parotides. Mumps parotides is associated with mumps or kites. Spermatoseal, this is a small sperm containing non-tender mass from the epididymis, and this might be associated with recent vasectomy. Recent vasectomy. This is, you will say, oh, Reda, we haven't mentioned the third question, and we have one hour or half an hour. Very nice. Because actually, these are about seven MRCS scenarios. So. My role as a course provider to tell you all common stuff in MRCS, and this is a common section. Hernias, hydrocele, varicocele, saphenavarix, pseudo, femoral, aneurysm. Okay, next one. Thank you. Um, okay, for those again, no one raised hand, so you can handle the upcoming one. A 55 year old man, complaints of pain in the right loin which has been present for three months. This pain occasionally radiates to the ipsilateral groin. This is also associated with hematuria, where the blood is in the form of worm-like clots. He has a firm lump uh, in the right loin. Yeah, yeah. He has a firm lump in the right loin, which moves with respiration, bimanually palpable and palatable. What is the most likely diagnosis? A, hydronephrosis, B, medullary response kidney, C, renal calculus, D, renal cell carcinoma, E, renal pelvis carcinoma. So, this could be uh, a, a D, renal cell carcinoma. 
So MRC's questions are very clear. When I ask you about 60 year old gentleman with difficulty in swallowing, weight loss recently, and nothing more. So simply expect that this is esophageal cancer. When I tell you there is right iliac fossa mass in a lady around 20, this mass is painful and she's recently uh, have some elevated fecal calprotectin and CRP. This mostly is terminal ileitis of Crohn's disease. Okay, if I told you there is a 50 gentleman coming with anemia and altered bowel habits and on examination, looks like right-sided abdominal mass. Please think about right colon cancer. When I tell you there is a lady around 15, young female with right iliac fossa tenderness with a rebound, please think about not appendicitis, think about pregnancy. So any lady with acute abdo pain is pregnant until proven otherwise. So pregnancy, ectopic pregnancy, then acute appendicitis or tube ovarian pathology. When I give you a story of a young, uh, uh, old gentleman with epigastric mass and deranged LFTs, and known to have ulcerative colitis, think about cholangiocarcinoma. Because cholangiocarcinoma can be, it is one of the periampullary cancers that can be associated with ulcerative colitis. When I give you an example of 40 alcoholic gentlemen coming with diabetes recently with previous admissions of recurrent epigastric being going to the back, please expect that this is acute on top of chronic pancreatitis. Again, if I gave you a history of 40 to 50 male with acute abdomen, epigastric radiating to the back, hemodynamic instability, think about triple A rupture, not pancreatitis. So all MRs is questions like that. Typical, like you are in front of a consultant and he's asking you. The same for urology. The same for urology. Painless hematuria. Think about either renal cell carcinoma of the kidney or TCC of the bladder. Why not? Squamous cell, because bladder squamous cell carcinoma is only common in two cases only. In Egypt, I don't know why, because we cleared already schistosoma hematobia. Okay, schistosoma hematobia is associated with squamous, squamous cell cancer. Okay, so think about squamous cell cancer in schistosoma hematobia due to chronic infection, or think about chronic or indwelling catheter use, prolonged irritation due to prolonged catheterization or chronic UTI, this can cause squamous cell carcinoma. Rather than this in the bladder, think about TCC, transitional. Why transitional? Simply because uh, bladder is lined with a type called the transitional epithelium that can be expanded due to expansion, due to uh, expansion of the bladder. If I asked you about a young lad, young lad, like two years or five years, coming with hematuria mass, think about what? Wellness tumor. Wellness tumor. tumor, excellent. Is a scene for this man. So what is your answer here? Renal cell carcinoma. Exactly. What is the type of renal cell carcinoma? 
Adenocarcinoma. What is the other name of renal cell carcinoma? Duet's uh, tumor. What is the other type? Hypernephoma. What is the other type? Okay. Other name? Sorry. Clear cell. Oh, clear cell. Hmm. Clear cell. Clear. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. So, a triad of pain mass hematuria macroscopically yellowish in color with cystic spaces and hemorrhage separated by multiple septate uh, loculi. Micro is a clear cell adenocarcinoma that produces abundant glycogen. The tumor sometimes can encase the renal vein or inferior vena cava. 25% of patients will be present with MITS. Quarter of your patients, you can have MITS. Hemoptosis in lung case or bone vein in bone or pathological fracture. What is the definition of pathological fracture? Simply, you hit your hand, then you have fracture. It is trivial trauma fracture due to metastasis, and you will be having hypercalcemia in that case. Excellent. Thank you so much. So next one, uh, Samreen. Thank you, Akit, for those. Hello, Dr. Rita. Am I audible? You are very audible. Go on. Hello. Okay. Thank you. A 66-year-old man attends the urology outpatient clinic with progressive void voiding, lower urinary tract symptoms, hesitancy, poor flow, and incomplete emptying. As a part of his clinical examination, he has a digital rectal examination which reveals an enlarged, smooth, and non-tender prostate consist, uh, consistent with uh, benign prostatic hyperplasia. In which zone of the prostate does BPH largely develop? Um, the options are peripheral zone, fibromascular stroma, anterior zone, central zone, and transitional zone. Um, and my answer is transitional zone. Okay. There is very nice picture. I draw it for you guys. Just to remember all of you. It is very nice. So I did the following. This colorful thing is demonstrating the difference. Just have a multiple look. So because a lot of people are asking, do you know in cancer prostate, when me as a surgical regi do digital rectal exam, I find that the posterior zone have a hard mass because it is posterior. So I can feel it from behind. And PP, posterior is the same as peripheral. Remember digital rectal exam for me, I can feel hard lump in the prostate because I can feel the posterior, which is the same as peripheral zone, which is like that. This is the one, which is, I can feel it from here. Excellent, okay. But in the meantime, benign prostatic hyperplasia, remember the transurethral section of the bladder in the urethra, okay. Here, you can go up and you do transurethral resection of the bladder. Why transurethral? Because it is median transition zone. So I can reach it through TERP. So I will never forget because Reda told me that he in cancer prostate from behind in the digital rectal exam, he find that the peripheral is the same as posterior zone got a hard lung. But in the median zone, which is a transition zone, the same word, when we need to do operation to benign prostatic hyperplasia, we do TERP, trans urethral resection of the prostate. Excellent. Never forget. Is that all right? Yes. Is it clear for everybody in the yes. chat? Let me in the chat. Is it clear for all of you? Because you will be asked in what is the most common region for 
most common zone for cancer, you will say peripheral or posterior. Okay, anyone in the chat, is it clear for you? But in the benign prostatic hyperplasia, what is the most common region? Is median or transition zone. So never seen. Okay. Okay. Okay, next one. Okay. Should I continue? Uh, 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 Samreen, iPhone, and then Mohab Musa. iPhone? Yes. Welcome, iPhone. Okay. I need your help. Go on. A uh, 73 year old man presents with the urology department with the two weeks of visible hematuria. He's investigated with a flexible cystoscopy and the CT urogram. The cystoscopy revealed this one centimeter papillary growth on the posterior wall of the bladder, which is exquisite. In the western wall, what is the most likely histological subtype of the bladder, of the bladder tumor? I think so. The I think transitional cell carcinoma. TCCY. TCCY. Yeah, in Western, I think TCC T, TCC is the commonest one. It's the most common one. In any world, it okay. In any area of the world, TCC is the most common one. If you have a country with like predominant schistosoma infection, schistosoma hematobium, then think about the squamous cell carcinoma. But in any area of the world, especially Western, 90% of tumors are TCCs, okay? So squamous cell carcinoma are only common when you have schistosoma hematobium endemic and Egypt, I don't know, this is the answer of uh, textbook, I should message them. We have no schistosoma hematobium <laughs> now. Squamous cell cancer called by chronic inflammatory long standing catheterization and the adeno of the bladder is rare and squamous and melanomas are rare as well. Okay, thank you so much. So very nice uh, stuff. This is the T TNM. Listen to me. In MRCS, you need TNM of the following parts of your body in MRCS. So, esophagus. TNM of the esophagus. TNM of the thyroid. TNM of the breast. TNM of the esophagus. So again, TNM, esophagus, thyroid, breast. TNM of the colon, which is actually known as modified Duke's classification of the colorectal cancer. So don't forget that you will be asked about TNM of thyroid, esophagus, breast, colorectal and melanoma, breslow, thickness. Okay, don't forget. These are the number, but here, bladder, no one will ask you about the bladder, but let's have a look. So in the bladder, TIS means that it is in situ. T0 means that TO or T0 or T0 cannot be assessed. TA, it is only confined to the urothelium. T1, it is invading the lamina propria. And in that case, you have 75, very nice five-year survival rate. But in T2, invasion of the superficial muscle, then you have T2. T3, A and B. A, deep muscle. B, serosa is involved. and 
awful. You have only in that cases, 10% five year survival rate. T4, you already invaded man. You already reached the serosa in T3B. Serosa is the outermost layer in T3, which is here. So you invade it. So in T4, you have organ, prostate, vagina, uterus, then T4A. Fix it to the pelvic wall, frozen, T4B. Excellent, excellent. This is for MRCS, not for urologists to lock. Painless hematuria, 95% of cases. And also carcinoma in situ can produce symptoms like to UTI, but no hematuria. Investigation, MSU means culture and urine for cytology, IVU, cystiuroscopy, and predominantly this is TCC most commonly. Smoking, dye and rubber industries like due to beta naphthalamine, CT scan and the transvasical ultrasound can be used to assess the depth of the tumor. Simply, you have simple mnemonics here for MRCS, but not for MDT urologists and these people that they have advanced teaching. So if you have an MRCS tumor from T0 to T1, then transversal section of the bladder tumor can be done. If you have high grade recurrence with carcinoma in situ, intravasical chemotherapy, BCG, reduce the recurrence and the progression rates. If you have invasion to T2 or T3, so invasive T2 or T3, then think about radical radiotherapy, radical cystectomy with formation of an ileal conduit. If you have metastatic, then chemotherapy. If you have bone pain, radiotherapy. Very simple. You don't need more. This is the best practice guidelines, abbreviated and summarized. Okay. So I know there are ongoing stuff, but in MRSS question, this would be more than enough. Okay. Uh, next one, uh, Samreen, thank you, and uh, Muhammad Fauzi, Mr. Muhammad Fauzi, and then uh, Abdirrahman Ishaq. Abdirrahman Ishaq, after Mr. Yeah, I open the mic for you, Muhammad Fauzi. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Forty years old man present with serious history of left testicular swelling. He has no systemic upset and no history of trauma. He does have a history of bilateral or craniopexy when aged two years. On examination, she has a hard craggy mass arising from the left testicular parenchyma and ultrasound confirms this testicular tumor. Tumor markers given in the table. Where is the tumor markers? Hello? Yes, so what's your answer? Uh, 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 the, uh, the last, uh, I know, uh, but, 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 but the last one, the tumor markers are given in the table. Where is the tumor markers, the uh, alpha protein? where is the uh, HCG, where here is the Here you are. Yeah. alpha protein uh, four, it's low. Um, uh, hemoglobin to be in um, 20, 20, uh, it's two little lactic dehydrogenase. Uh, 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 but I, I, I get it by the age of the patient, most common in the age of the patient above, above 40, it is the seminoma, and it proved otherwise, and we can differentiate it with teratoma by another thing is um, by elevated alpha fetoprotein and hemoglobin to be. Simply S and T, S and T, 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 T. So teratoma, alpha-feed protein, 
and the twenties to thirties. They say the age is it twenty to thirties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is TT, teratoma, 20 to 30 age in MRCS. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. noma is read SS, so 30 to 40, this is the age. And, yeah, and uh, S is what be sensitive, radio sensitive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but my answer yeah. is, uh, is, is, is seminoma true? Excellent, yes. Yeah, 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 and uh, and another another tumors uh, has um, okay. So non 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 seminomatous germ cell tumors, which is NCGCT, and seminoma are the most common forms of testicular tumor. Others are rare. Cryptorchidism is a significant risk factor for both of them, and as I said, seminoma, uh, teratoma. Is most commonly 20 to 30, while seminoma is 40 to 50. And both can be risen, alpha fetoprotein and HCG, and more likely to be raised in non seminomatous germ cell tumors. Lactate dehydrogenase can be raised in 20% of seminomas. So, as I told you, just remember by the age, age yeah. is the factor. 20 to 30 was going with teratoma. Beta HCG and uh, for, uh, 30 to 40, radio sensitive, it is seminoma. Thank you so much. Thank you. There is some people asking me about the management of this stuff, no problem, but it's not important for MRCs. If you have testicular tumor confined to the testis, you simply do orchidectomy, orchidectomy silent, and observe or radical lymph node dissection. This is for teratoma. But if you have seminoma, then because it's radio sensitive, you will do orchidectomy and you will give radiotherapy to paraortic lymph nodes. If you have stage two due to presence of bulky disease and retroperitoneal nodes, you will do in case of teratoma, chemo and lymph node dissection. In case of seminoma, because it's radio sensitive, if you have only nodes, you will do radiotherapy to nodes. If you have bulky disease, then you can do radio plus chemo. Nodal disease above diaphragm, teratoma, we said chemo. Here, radio plus chemo, you will consider it as bulky disease. But you have, if you have visceral myths in both cases, you will perform chemo. This is to simplify for a lot of people that they are like eager to know. This is very simplified. So retroperitoneal lymph node dissection, this is abbreviation to here. Okay, very nice. Okay, so what is the differential diagnosis of or a cause of hematuria? If you have hematuria painless, Think about malignancy. Painful, think about UTI. Very simple. Kidney, the most common cause is nephrolithiasis in kidney and ureter. And the bladder, think about cystitis or TCC if you have weight loss. And if you have painless ejaculation, and when you do digital rectal exam, there is painful process, think about, and there is the inflammatory markers, you can think about prostatitis. Okay, so prostate cancer management. If you have a prostate cancer, you will find hard, irregular, enlarged prostate with obliteration of the median sulcus on digital rectal exam, blood tests including BSA, please. And if you have bone pain, or hypercalcemia, think about metastasis. So bone scan would be of a great help after PSA. Transurethral, transrectal ultrasound imaging and true and ultrasound guided true cut biopsy. And there are new, uh, like there is a CT and MRI recent in the prostate cancer. I don't know, want you to know this investigation because you will not be asked. 
abdominal ultrasound to see bladder outlet obstruction, hydronephrosis, and residual urine volume bladder scan. Bone scan to look for mets, sclerotic, because the bone, we said bone mets are bone forming, sclerotic. If you have a bladder outlet obstruction, think about transurous resection of the prostate. If you have T1 or T2, think about radiotherapy or radical prostatectomy. If you have T3 and T4, radiotherapy would be of great help. If you have metastatic, think about hormonal manipulation and radiotherapy in case of bone pain. I know it's very simple, and this is what's required from you in MRCS. This is a prostate cancer. TNM is not required. Okay, next one, who is with me? So, Samreen, thank you, Mr. Mohamed Fauzi. Are you urology? No, no, are no, I'm a general surgeon. But you are excellent in urology then. <laughs> thank you, thank you, the career. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, because urology leave a lot of stuff to us. So that's why we read in urology as well. <laughs> okay, next one. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Abdurrahman Ishaq. A uh, 25 year old man pre presents flow and astral injury to his cranium, having a film straight on the beam in the genostium. Clinically, there is a brineal hematoma with blood on his external urinary metas, which anatomical structure is most likely to be injured. Uh, brineal hematoma. I think membranous urethra. I think it's urethra. There is urethral injury. Uh, bladder neck, bulbar urethra. That is urethra. your answer. Bulbar urethra. It's urethra, yeah, urethra. So what is the difference when I say bulbar and membranous? Do you know what is the difference? Yeah, in membranous, there is sometimes you cannot uh, palpate the prostate and uh, also I think it's more membranous, more related to the prostate. So I think if there is a injury to the membranous urethra, there will be a high prostate. You cannot, I mean, uh, Palpate the prostate, and what else? I think that one is is more differential one. What what else? What else? What is common is common. So what what is this associated with, and what is that associated with? So simply, I will tell you a very nice secret. Bulbar will is will be a straddle type injury, but membranous will be pelvic fracture. Is it nice? Mm -hmm. So simply, membranous, remember pelvic fracture. Bulbar, remember straddle injury. Do you know what is the word straddle mean? Do you know what is the meaning of a straddle? Uh, I think it's related to the cycle or something. Please attend the question posting session, please. Please, it is a golden way to pass. If you have heard any recommendation to us, apart from the question posting session, you just missed. So bulbar bladder urethra is, bulbar uh, rupture of bulbar urethra is fall when you are uh, like straddle type, like when you have a scaff scaffolders, gymnasium accidents. So you will just, cycle, uh, riding your bicycle, and then you came in, uh, like in the middle of the tube. You know, this is a very bad one. So you will find recently skateboarding injuries, and this is the main one. So there will be triad, Re urinary tension, blood at the external meatus, and perineal hematoma. Okay. And if you delayed, you will find urinary extravasation. Why? 
because the anatomical attachments of the coolis fascia to the triangular, triangular ligaments and scarbus fascia just below the inguinal ligament, causing the extravasated urine to collect in the scrotum and penis. And under the deep layer of the superficial fascia of the abdominal wall. And your diagnosis confirmed by what? Retrograde cysto urine program. Okay. But if I told you membranous urethra rupture, I will give you history of bladder might be associated with a bladder rupture due to what? Due to pelvic fracture. fracture. So pelvic fracture and the high displaced prostate should indicate diagnosis of membranous urethra. This is very simple before, before going through everything and talking about everything, okay? So anatomically, the membranous urethra is the shortest, narrowest, mm -hmm. and least dilatable part of the urethra. It is, so it is the short, shortest one. No. Okay. The an anterior urethra is 16 centimeter and has a proximal, perineal, and distal penile component. And the posterior one is divided into pre-prostatic and the prostatic and membranous parts. This is the posterior part of the urethra. Okay, so I don't need this stuff. I just need what I said previously. Don't, I don't need this anatomy. Okay. Okay, and this is the attachment of, this is the scarpus fascia. This is the camber. So when you open the tummy, there is skin, superficial fascia. Superficial fascia divided into superficial fatty layer, cold, camper's fascia. Yeah, then, the, the deep membranous fascia called the scarpus Camp. fascia. Okay, scarpus will continue to be dartus fascia around the penis, okay? And then the box fascia will arise from the root of the penis to cover the penis here. So you have here skin superficial fatty layer here, but no fatty in the, when you see a, a, a penis, you can't find fat around the penis. You have only skin deep membranous layer, which is a scarbus, called dartus. After dartus, there is another enveloping layer called box fascia coming only in the root of the penis to the penis only. Dartus will continue here as well. It is a deep membranous layer and you have no fat in your scrotal layer. And then the dartus at the perineum called coolis. So very nice one to be honest. So scarbus continue to be dartus in the penis and in the scrotum, and then will be cold coolis around the perineum. If you have, as we said, if you have bulbar urethral rupture, this will be propagated. The fluid will be propagated to the anterior abdominal wall and the scrotum. Okay. Anterior urethra is beginning in the meatus of the penis and will include the fossa navicularis and pendular urethra and the bulbar urethra. And then the pendular urethra is delineated from the bulbar urethra at the suspensory ligament of the penis. Okay, so this is the anterior one. And this is the posterior one. Okay, so simple. Bulbar urethra with straddle type injury. Mm. Membranous urethra with pelvic fracture injury. The posterior will include the membranous, prostatic, and the bladder neck one. This is the posterior membranous urethra. Okay, very nice. So we haven't finished. I will start 
another session which is called the urology i files this is the updates and i will start urology i file which will be with mr nazir he is a urology phd he finished recently and successfully passed mrc as part a so he will be responsible for the upcoming part which is the golden eye files okay mr nazir are you ready thank you so much Mr. Nazir, are you ready? Mr. Nazir, are you ready? Uh, I will call him, he might be sleeping. Okay, he's going now, but we will start in the meantime. So, Abdurrahman Ishaq, uh, Muhab, and Samreen. Samreen, are you here? Hello. Assalamu alaikum, go on. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Yeah. Um, management of testicular conditions. An 18 year old present with a swelling in his left testicle. On examination, the swelling is tense smooth, fluctuant, and trans 